the cool thing about being a park ranger is that you get to say to people, when I was a park ranger, <laughs> and then people immediately decide if they want to be your friend or not. Right. <laughs> so, exactly. <laughs> uh, I've loved that, actually. It's kind of fun because when I start saying, oh, yeah, when I was a park ranger, you know, you can either see that they're getting excited with you, like, oh, my gosh, that's such a cool thing. Or, oh, she's a weirdo. I don't think I want to be her friend. <laughs> uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> this is the Exploring the National Parks podcast with Dirt in My Shoes. My name is Ash, and I'm a former park ranger and the founder of Dirt in My Shoes. I think that the parks are best seen from the trail, and I'm here to make national park trip planning easy. And I'm John. I carry the kids on the trails, I tell stories, and notice all the things that Ash doesn't care about much, like birds. Join us as we show you around America's spectacular national parks. We're sharing our favorite places, fun facts, adventures, and misadventures. And we'll even throw in a little trip planning. Let's start exploring. Well, we did it. Welcome to episode one of Exploring the National Parks. Of one. Episode one of one. (laughs) With dirt in my shoes. If you've been following Dirt in My Shoes for a while, you probably recognize my voice. I'm Ash. I'm a former park ranger. I started Dirt in My Shoes as a way to help people get out into the national parks. But we're adding in my husband, John. That's me. You're hearing a new voice here. (laughs) (laughs) And I wanted to bring John in because he not only works for Dirt in My Shoes, he works behind the scenes. He does a lot of the editing Uh, video and photos, but also because he is a storyteller. He's a lot of fun to have around. He's gone on all these trips with me. (laughs) So (laughs) we wanted to give you a glimpse into our national park trips and just talk about how much fun they are and the things that we're able to do and a lot of our favorite things in the national parks. Yeah. So thanks, Ash, for inviting me into this. Like I said, my name is John. I typically, my, my responsibilities are to carry the children hold sticky hands along the trail, pull them up the hills, and tell long stories to help the kids get through what we do. And that way Ash can take a lot of the pictures and kind of notice a lot of the details that generally get overlooked if you're having conversations like, that's a green tree, daddy, kind of a thing. (laughs) And so this this is kind of fun. We're excited to start this podcast together. Yeah, well, let's be honest. The kids prefer hiking with you because you are so good at doing fun things. (laughs) I'm the one that has my head in the spreadsheets and he's the one that's making everything fun. So we thought we would add those two together (laughs) and bring you along our national park trips with us. So the point of this episode really is just to introduce ourselves to you um, so that you can get to know us in a fun way. And then we also wanted to talk about what to expect going forward from this Exploring the National Parks podcast. Right. So we're going to talk about a different park pretty much every month. Mm -hmm. We have at this point, we're wanting to talk about our favorite things in each national park. So that includes favorite restaurants, favorite viewpoints, hikes, restaurants, favorite gateway towns, things Mm -hmm. like that. Another episode, we wanted to talk more about the adventures and misadventures that we've had in the parks, Mm -hmm. different stories. Many (laughs) adventures and many misadventures. (laughs) So we wanted to talk about that. And then John was going to do a fun facts episode for each park. Yeah, kind of a nerdy episode where you can kind of geek out on some of the things that make the park special, some of the things that uh, maybe delve into a little bit more of the sciencyness that you'll get maybe if you visit a national park and do like a ranger program or something like that you know they'll give you a little bit of sciencey nerdiness that you can geek out on that's something i really have a lot of fun with and that's a little bit more my thing i think sometimes for sure john always jokes that i was the worst park ranger in the world (laughs) Uh, (laughs) and that's because I am not very good at remembering the names of like flowers or rocks, you know, like birds. (laughs) For the record, I do like birds. I just don't have the patience to sit and watch them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. Ash tells a story when she was up in Alaska once she was on a, her and one of her other ranger friends 
their job was to like catalog the amount of organisms in like a few square foot spaces or something yeah, like that. Yeah, the tide pools. The tide pools uh-huh. and stuff like that. And you, uh, let's just say, didn't have the patience to sit and wait for things to move. <laughs> I did a lot of daydreaming. I couldn't <laughs> find anything. My coworker always found so much stuff and I never found anything. And anyway, I can never remember the names of things. People would ask me, oh, what's that flower? I'd be like, oh, shoot, I don't know. <laughs> So, yeah, in that regard, I probably was a pretty terrible park ranger, but I was really good at helping people follow the rules, Uh finding the trails they needed, knowing when a parking lot was going to be full or not. Well, knowing how to make people make the most of their time, for sure. Like, you're a very good park ranger. It's just I I tease you because whenever I geek out on this stuff, your eyes kind of glaze (laughs) over a little bit and (laughs) I realize that I've lost you. (laughs) It's not that it's not interesting. Well, (laughs) maybe it is that it's not that interesting to me, but I do like learning about it, which is why I think it will be really fun to hear you talk about the things that interest you for each park. Right. I think that's going to be really cool. The final. You'll be there and you'll be part of that episode and And you'll have to listen. I will. I I will listen to my best ability and make smart comments as much as I can. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> be good. the last episode that we wanted to do was a little bit of trip planning which is just like a general overall you know best time to visit how many days to stay how to get there stuff like that so we will do a little bit of that but mostly it's going to be stories and fun and giving you tips from mm-hmm. our own trips right so that you can also have a really cool vacation to the national parks yep that sounds great sounds like so much fun it will be It's going to be a blast. But for this episode, I think we really just wanted to let you get to know us a little bit. We'll keep it short so it's not going to take a ton of your time. But hopefully you'll join us in the future when you want to learn more about the national parks and and go on a fun adventure with us. But for now, let's talk about us. (laughs) Yeah, so much fun. There's nothing I love talking more about than myself. Well, so. we we're trying to make it fun, not just like my favorite color is yellow. <laughs> yes. Well, hopefully this is you getting to know your tour guide. We're right. your tour guide through the national parks and we're just going to tell you a little bit about us so that you know where we're coming from. Perfect. So, Ash, would you like to start? Yeah, I'll start. Okay, so we thought it would be fun to write a list of things that was a little bit unique about us. And my list, I wanted to write... The five coolest things about being a park ranger. Hmm. Nice. So, yeah. There's even books about that. <laughs> Is there? Uh huh. I saw one last time we were in a national park gift shop. Like oh. something about you want to be a national park ranger, don't you? Or something like that. Okay. Well, my list is going to be more fun. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So before I start, I worked as a park ranger in Alaska and Utah and Wyoming, which between all three of those places, very different ecosystems, Mm -hmm. uh, very different plant life, you know, very different animals, very different landscapes. And so, and my job has varied greatly between each of the parks too Mm -hmm. so anyway i wanted to talk more about some of the cool things about being a park ranger in those places and let you get to know me a little bit more as park ranger ash right okay so let's begin number one of my list of the five coolest things about being a park ranger is that you have the best excuses for being late for work yes so a couple of experiences that i had that i just thought were really funny I was late for work quite a bit, actually, especially in Alaska, Mm -hmm. (laughs) because I would have to walk from my apartment. It was like a 10 minute walk down to the office uh, where I worked. And so and I worked when I was in Alaska, I was more in like a backcountry uh, ranger role. So I did dispatch. So we did that. Plus, I did like uh, permits did a lot of permits. I did. You even went out with the Coast Guard a few times, didn't you? I went, yeah. I got to go out on a Coast Guard cutter when they came into the bay. We, uh, I manned the radios. So I did a lot of like, if people had mayday calls and stuff like that, I would hear those, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, it was totally out of my element, actually. I'm a 
I'm a girl from Utah. <laughs> I love the mountains. I got up there and my boss was like, wow, you don't belong here, do you? <laughs> yes. I'm like, I don't even know, you know, port side and, you know, anything about a boat. I just... <laughs> port starboard and you're like i no the longer tides. need moisturizer up here <laughs> i know <laughs> the rain is constant well and i i remember i told him i was like does it always rain like this <laughs> and he just laughed at me it was like man <laughs> yeah it was the coldest like wettest summer of my life didn't he say that he saw a star once yeah <laughs> it was like stars i saw a star once <laughs> it was always cloudy so <laughs> mm -hmm. tangent you told a story once about how very different people in Utah boat versus people on the coast boat. Because people in Utah, people on the interior of the country, maybe, we don't really necessarily name our boats like, you know, the Queen Mary and stuff like that. You right. Know, wouldn't he talk about that a little bit? Well, yeah. So it would be funny when I would fill out or issue permits for people who wanted to come bring their boat into the park. You could always tell the people who like knew what they were doing mm -hmm. <laughs> versus the ones who didn't, because I remember pulling permits once and like everybody, yeah, everybody has a name for their boat. You know, if you live on the ocean, you name your boat. And there were, there was a couple of groups from Utah that were trying to get permits and <laughs> they were under the boat name mm -hmm. section of the permit. They put speedboat one and speedboat two. <laughs> So, we're like, yep, yeah, that's the world I come from. Where oh my we're gosh. like, no, my boat doesn't have a name. It uh -huh. just goes Versus fast. Like, that, that's one of my favorite <laughs> things to do when we go to like a port town or something like that. And we're in the marina, maybe eating dinner or something like that. Just read the names of the boats. Yeah. Speedboat one, <laughs> speedboat two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It gave my coworkers something to laugh about because I was pretty much the only one that was from a landlocked state mm -hmm. <laughs> that didn't know how to navigate the ocean very well yeah so okay all that aside <laughs> sorry tangent so yes i had the best excuses for being late for work because i would have to walk to work i'd walk to the backcountry office and i remember once i came out of my apartment and there was a big moose just on my porch <laughs> eating the ferns <laughs> And so I just quickly turned around, went back in, and I called my boss and I was like, I don't know. I don't know when I'm <laughs> going to be at work because there's a moose on my porch. And it did. It took like an hour. She was taking her sweet time. She was just eating. <laughs> I had nowhere to go. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that same job, I would walk to work. I just picture you kind of like the only way to get out of that situation is being like Napoleon Dynamite. When he's just like feeding his llama. Dang it, Tina. And just like, <laughs> you should have named the moose Tina or something. Just throw ham at the moose, uh, trying to get it to move. I don't feed wildlife, John. That's right. I'm a good enough park ranger to know that. <laughs> That's right. That's true. All right, scratch but, uh, that. No Napoleon Dynamite in Glacier Bay. No ham for mooses. <laughs> there were bears on the trail, too a lot when I would try to get to work. And so I would just, you know, give them their space and wait for them to move out of the way so I could get to the office. Mm -hmm. So that was a really fun part of being a park ranger. I think that's one of the coolest things about being a park ranger is that you have a really good excuse to be late. Yeah, that is a pretty good one. Okay. Versus I just didn't get my hair done on time. Right. It's a lot better. Which was never my problem. <laughs> So number two, the five coolest things about being a park ranger is that you learn a whole bunch of epic skills that you'll never use again. <laughs> mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, at the beginning of every job, you do pretty extensive training and there are just some really weird things that I've learned mm -hmm. <laughs> over the years, Yeah, which actually when I was thinking about this, I was like, you know, there are some that I probably will never use again. But there are some that I've been able to apply in other situations, which has been kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so. I remember bringing it back to Glacier Bay because we live in the interior. We're laid lay locked again. I remember seeing pictures of you in like these scuba survival suits. It was kind of amazing. You definitely don't use those very much out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the water was so cold in Glacier Bay that we had to do training cold water training mm -hmm. and so basically what we would do is they have these big special fancy 
you know, super thick suits that you're supposed to have on your boat in case your boat goes down Mm -hmm. (laughs) and you have, you know, whatever, a minute to get your suit on before you freeze to death. (laughs) And so, yeah, so I, we would train with those and I'm very petite as far as (laughs) like, I'm really, I'm really short (laughs) and none of the suits fit me very well. You look kind of like... (laughs) You look like a kid putting on your mom's onesie. Yeah. And well, then I with the rest like... of the rangers, you're all trying to do synchronized <laughs> swimming. It's kind of what it looked like in the pictures. They were. And I was not cooperating because I couldn't swim in it. Like, I couldn't maneuver in it. I couldn't see. It was like <laughs> not. The eye holes weren't coming at my eyes at the right place. And like, yeah. So everybody got a good laugh about that. It's a good I'm thing you like, never fell in the water. Yeah. Well, I was just floating. Right. off by myself because <laughs> I couldn't maneuver in the suit so but yeah that training probably not uh, very effective for me although you know if I ever find myself in <laughs> that mm-hmm. situation then there you go I'll know how to put on the suit right another one I did up there that was really interesting was like small plane flight training because hmm. a lot of the researchers use small airplanes right. to go up and to count wildlife and to look at the glaciers and things like that and so we all had to go through flight training you know Mm -hmm. what to do basically what to do if your plane goes down right (laughs) scary stuff well yeah and i mean in alaska that's a really big concern that's one of the top ways like people die in alaska sometimes isn't it yeah it is not to scare anybody a little dark turn right there (laughs) Well, it's true. And so we had to do training like that. I was thinking I also like I've done training where it's like bear training. I've done bear training at all of my jobs, Mm -hmm. but I've been able to spray bear spray, you know, stuff like that. So that actually has come in handy. And another one that came in handy, I feel like, is we did cold water kayaking Mm -hmm. training Mm -hmm. uh, up in Glacier Bay again. That one had like some of the most extreme crazy trainings that right. I've ever done. But it's because there's a natural force there that's oh my trying to kill you. <laughs> it is at every <laughs> the, turn. <laughs> the ocean is as peaceful as it looks when you're deep sea fishing sometimes it, or standing on the shore. It, it is the one great force yeah. sometimes that can really come after you. Well, and the tide swings in that park are no joke. Mm-hmm. Like you're talking like 40 foot tide swings so i mean it's just it is it's a very a very crazy landscape but uh we had to do cold water kayak training which basically was just like eight hours of dumping ourselves out of our kayaks and trying to get back in (laughs) (laughs) so uh but i feel like that came in handy we were in grand teton we were whitewater rafting with your family yeah 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 and your dad flipped the raft Yep. And I went in and I went down the river (laughs) and I remembered like, you know, the cold water shock and stuff and, you know, things that I had learned as a park ranger. So I was able to keep my cool enough to, you know, make sure my feet were going down first. And and I was gathering up all the paddles that everybody (laughs) dropped Uh and stuff like I think I stayed pretty calm. Yep. Don't you, did you good. think? Yeah. I remember that. That because... was my Glacier Bay training in action. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a crazy experience. I could go into that a lot more, but needless to say, <laughs> that, <laughs> that was unanticipated, unwanted dumping of everything in the boat. Oh my gosh. So it was pretty crazy. Uh, okay, let's move on. Okay. So another of the coolest things about being a park ranger, number three, is let's state the obvious here, you get paid to hike. Yeah. Which is like my dream job. In a cool hat. Well, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I love the hat. Don't get me wrong. It's not that comfortable for hiking in though. I sweat a lot when I hike. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Those two little holes at the top of the hat (laughs) to help get rid of the humidity up there doesn't do a job. Not much ventilation there. Actually, I would usually just hike in my ball cap. Mm. I have like a national park ball cap that Mm -hmm. I wore all the time when I was out on the trail. But it was pretty cool because I could show up to work, especially like when I worked at Grand Teton. You know, some days I was in the office, but some days I got to just strap on a a radio and go hike wherever I wanted. Mm -hmm. Just do some trail patrol. I went canoeing on String Lake once for trail patrol. I got to hike 
all my favorite trails. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, the thing about that is when you're a park ranger, you know, everybody wants to stop and talk to you and ask questions. So you don't cover that much ground, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it is so much fun to be out on the trail. Right. As a job. Sure. So. Be really difficult for you. What kind of tree is this, Ash? Yeah. Ranger Ash? <laughs> it's greenish with sharp needles. It's a pine I would say tree. It's a pine tree. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yes. you did a good job. I know you did a good job. I like to tease I was you. always really friendly. <laughs> you were very friendly. And I made sure people weren't feeding the squirrels. And you were very, so. kept them safe, knew where they were going, and you were very nice. That's right. They loved you. So, okay. <laughs> Number four. Number four. Okay. So, the cool thing about being a park ranger is that you get to say to people, when I was a park ranger... <laughs> And then people immediately decide if they want to be your friend or not. Right. <laughs> so, exactly. <laughs> uh, I've loved that, actually. It's kind of fun because when I start saying, oh, yeah, when I was a park ranger, you know, you can either see that they're getting excited with you, like, oh, my gosh, that's such a cool thing. Or, oh, she's a weirdo. I don't think <laughs> I want to be her friend. <laughs> uh -huh. Exactly. Some people think that it's kind of like Brian Regan. Well, I went to the moon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm one-upping you yes, yeah, exactly. when I was a park ranger. <laughs> when I was a park ranger, <laughs> I wrestled a bear Yeah, for a Twinkie. <laughs> I feel like people, like, yeah, they either think it's pretty cool or they just think, like, oh, yeah, she's, like, not my type of person. Because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people aren't that outdoorsy or care. Mm -hmm. um, so also I feel like for me it's a fun way to kind of determine, you know, are, are we going to have something in common right. <laughs> as friends? Right. <laughs> Can I take you with me on trips? You know, mm -hmm. can we go hiking together? Because that's pretty important to me. So, yep. exactly. yeah. So that's a fun side effect of having my past life as a park ranger. Yep. Okay. And number five, the coolest thing about being a park ranger is that you get to be super stylish. Ooh. The hat. <laughs> the hat. I brought up the hat too early. Yeah. So I loved wearing the uniform. There were some funny things about it, though. Uh, first of all, like I never found hiking shoes that were in uniform that were comfortable. <laughs> I don't know if they fixed that since I was a park ranger, but <laughs> uh -huh. my hiking boots were always so uncomfortable. And my bosses would be like, you need to like we were supposed to polish them every mm -hmm. day so they look nice but like i'm like i don't know like i'm out hiking i don't right I don't they're covered in mud <laughs> i'll polish the mud yeah so my my boss would always be like ashley you need to polish your shoes you look <laughs> you look unkempt <laughs> i'm like i'm a park ranger <laughs> isn't that what we're supposed to be but, but no so the boots i never never found a pair that i liked and this is because park rangers don't go through boot camp Right. Like soldiers, oh my gosh. where they have to do push-ups and run miles if they yeah. don't have polished shoes. Yeah, they just need to look good. The hats. So I don't know if, a, probably most people don't know that depending on the season, you wear a different type of hat hmm. or a different type of uniform. Like there's certain pieces of the uniform that you can only wear if it's winter oh, I didn't or know only wear if it's summer. And so the flat hat that I have on display, the straw one, uh -huh. that's the summer flat hat right but i also have a winter one that is a felt it's like a, it's totally different oh cool so yeah is it so, more green yeah it's a little more gray i feel like okay i haven't looked at it for a while but yeah i feel like it's a little more gray so yeah but the funniest story that i can think of about the uniform is uh, my <laughs> when i was in grand teton so it's kind of hot in grand teton during the summer and can can wear shorts as a park ranger they do issue shorts but they're like knee shorts uh -huh. you know they, they come down pretty low and then the other thing is that you have certain socks that you can wear and so i had my socks on but the socks like go up you know mid-calf <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> and so anytime anyone wanted like we we're just like oh my gosh it's so hot so outside like you're in this germ like <laughs> A German kid with his oh later hose in on or something like that. <laughs> so we would always laugh at each other when we'd show up in shorts because it was the most ridiculous 
uniform like to have your shorts <laughs> with your knee high socks uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and your big huge hiking boots so oh my gosh yeah. yeah so that was always just like an inside joke at Grand Teton like someone came in with shorts and we we're like oh my gosh he's wearing <laughs> shorts <laughs> So awesome. anyway, but the uniform is a really fun part of being a park ranger. Uh huh. That's and awesome. That's my list. Hopefully, you know that gives you some insight into me and my life as a park ranger. Yeah, those are five great things. I was never a park ranger, so I don't have a list of five things about like what's cool about what I did. You know, so I was a car salesman before we did this, and yeah. so <laughs> I could uh, go into that. But no, I decided to do something a little different. I thought the best way to get to know me is to talk about five adventures that I want to do. And so... In the national parks? In the, well, not all of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in the national parks. But I feel like I love the national parks, but I love adventures and there's adventures in lots of ways. Yeah, but sure. let's see. I'm John. I'm Ashley's husband. She signed a legally binding contract to love me, which is great. I like <laughs> trees, flowers, animals, geology, you know, history, and above all stories. I, I love a good story. But number one, the first adventure that I want to go on does happen to be in the national parks. I want to hike rim to rim to rim. Yeah. In the Grand Canyon. Oh my gosh, I'm right there with you. If you have never been to the Grand Canyon, let me explain (laughs) it. There's a north rim and a south rim because the canyon is so huge and they're separated by like five hours. It takes five hours to drive around basically from one side to the other. Or... You can hike from one side to the other. You hike from one rim down to the river, up the other side to the north or south rim, and then back down and back to where you started. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know, 60 miles? How, long, how far do you think that is? It's like 12 down. Honestly, no, I don't, I don't think it matters how many miles. It will be the most excruciating hike you've ever done. <laughs> Yes, it's going to be so cool. My grandpa, I remember my grandpa talked about how he had hiked the Grand Canyon a bunch of times. And so like, and he'd been in there so many times. And there was a few times when they got like the monsoon season came through and washed out the trails and everything like that. It was just super adventurous. But yeah, I want to start on the South Rim, maybe go down the South Kaibab Trail, meet up with the Colorado River at the Phantom Ranch, camp down there, hike up to the North Rim maybe eat dinner up at the lodge up there Mm -hmm. spend the night hike back down to phantom ranch spend the night again and then go back up the bright angel trail and eat at el tovar nice that's my grand canyon adventure that i want to do i am so with you on that except i have to add a side note Uh i just got back from the grand canyon right (laughs) i about died on the trail (laughs) Yes. It, you know, it's funny. It was for... because she stepped in a puddle of <laughs> mule pee. No, that did not happen. No, I was very vigilant to avoid the mule pee. Yes. But hiking yeah. the Grand Canyon is hard. You know, yeah. we hike a lot and that's still just like, I don't know. I can't think of a harder trail that we've done. It's so steep. Yeah. It's, it, you know. Well, and it's kind of that... monotonous, you yeah. know. I mean, we came up the Bright Angel on the south rim Uh and that trail is pretty monotonous for you know you're just doing switchbacks all the way up for a long time it's beautiful monotonous but it's like sometimes well when you're that tired (laughs) yeah you're just looking at your feet yeah i was gonna say it gets into your head Mm -hmm. (laughs) where you're just like i don't think i'm gonna make it out i'm I'm not sure i'm not sure i'm coming out of this yeah it's true that's gonna be awesome yeah that'll be a fun adventure i can't wait for it yeah and i think we might drop the kids off at grandma, grandpa's house yeah. for that one sometime. Yeah. So if you're listening, grandma and grandpa, just be aware. <laughs> you're missing out. <laughs> All right. Adventure number two. I want to hike the Wonderland Trail around Mount Rainier. Yes. That one. So if you've never been to Mount Rainier, it is a huge mountain. And there is a lot of tall mountains in the United States and around the world. But I don't know. This one stands out to me. Because it basically starts from zero and goes mm-hmm. all the way up past 14,000 feet. There's a lot of tall 14ers. There's a lot of 14ers, 14,000 foot peaks in the United States. But most of them start at a much higher elevation than Mount Rainier does. Right. You find a lot of those in Colorado where you're already 
pretty high mm-hmm. by the time you start. So, yeah. Even yeah. Mount Whitney, I think, starts at a much higher elevation yeah. than Mount Rainier does because Mount Rainier is like, I don't know, 20 It's not that far from, from Seattle. Like basically yeah. <laughs> uh, the Seattle area. And yeah. so, you know, you're it's sea level. And so it just goes from zero to 14,000 as a giant volcano. But the park itself is kind of like a square. The National Park is a square around Mount Rainier and the Wonderland Trail basically just skirts the bottom Mm -hmm. all the way around the park, you know, up and over the foothills. And, you know, there's a lot of really beautiful places that that trail goes through and it just circles the whole mountain. I think that would be so cool. Yeah. And how long is that one? That one's like 90 miles. like 94 miles or something like that. Yeah. Through, I think, some of the best scenery in the country. Oh, yeah. Well, I You think... can't beat Mount Rainier for mountain scenery. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's just incredible. It's, it's one of the only places, I think, in the country where the glaciers are expanding. Yeah. Because it's such a big mountain and there's so much moisture and it's just so pretty. The trees are awesome. I don't know. It's just, it's it's a great place to hang out. And I'll just tell everybody, I have a bag that I'm getting patches of all the fun adventures that I've done. And I'm putting patches on this bag. Hasn't gotten very far yet. But... I could just put patches of Mount Rainier all over that thing. <laughs> it's so cool. It's That's like, probably one of our favorite hiking parks. I yeah. think it's so hard to beat mm-hmm. the trails and the views. Well, from Mount the Rainier. skyline trail up above Paradise, you can see like three other volcanoes. Yeah. From Mount Rainier, you know, yeah. you can see like the Mount St. Helens, and I think oh, I can't remember some of the other ones up there. But I mean, yeah. geez, Louise, the Cascades, which are all these volcano mountains are so cool. Oh. So. Yeah. If if we ever get permits for the Wonderland Trail, mm-hmm. I'm bailing on every single thing that I have on my calendar yeah. <laughs> to make that happen. Yeah. So that's a cool one. That's a, a, a adventure number two on the list. Number three is one that Ash probably would not attend. It would probably be me and whatever child I can drag along with me <laughs> is the Oregon Trail. I have always wanted to do the Oregon Trail from, geez, I can't remember where. There's a few different places that it starts from. You should probably learn like more about it. This, maybe this is why I don't want to go with you because yeah. I feel like it would just <laughs> be you wandering around. Yeah, I do depend on Ashley's trip planning <laughs> prowess for a lot of the adventures that I go on. But uh, I do. I think it starts in like Lincoln, Nebraska. No, Independence, <laughs> Missouri. I don't know. There's you got the Somewhere Mormon Trail there. and yeah. the Oregon Trail that start in different places. Close to Iowa. Anyhow, I want to do the Oregon Trail. <laughs> I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be really cool. Because I really think Pioneer stuff is super neat. You know, all the people in the mid-1800s that crossed the country and, you know, found, that cut their way, you know, across the the plains and then even through the mountains that huge barriers between them and gold in the you know call it california and stuff like that i don't know. there's some really cool history that i can hike through with my hand cart or something like that because i don't <laughs> dare try to use like a mule team or something like that across the country so i feel like that one is like quintessentially you because yeah you I mean, we made a special stop in Astoria. You could see the Lewis and Clark, you mm-hmm. know, Fort Clatsop. That's something that you talk about a lot. I feel yeah. like it's just like the westward expansion and all those old trails that oh yeah that go through. All these cool explorers that found their way through the frontier. You yeah. know, you've got the explorers that were like trying to figure out what this great big country was. And then you've got, you know, the settlers, you know, that were saw this great, beautiful opportunity in the frontier and wanted to go and, you know, cut themselves a life out in the middle of nowhere, yeah. you know. You know, there were a lot of Native people out there too, you know, but, I mean, this is so much history. Yeah. And there's so many tough, hardy people, you know, that have such amazing stories. I don't know. Doing the Oregon Trail is my way of, you know, enjoying and learning and, putting myself in their shoes a little bit yeah so i think that's a perfect one for you 
And no, I won't be joining you. You can drive. Maybe for part of it. You'll drive. <laughs> you'll you'll drop off caches of food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and water for us. I'll I'll check and make sure you're still alive. Yeah. Number four. Number four is another way that I could actually do the Oregon Trail. I want to have a sled dog team, and I want to mush. <laughs> I really want to mush. There. And if I had if I had a sled dog team, they could help me pull my cart across yeah. the country. <laughs> I think that'd be super cool. But there's a there's a race in Wyoming called the Pedigree Stage Stop, and I don't know if I'll ever have enough dogs to do it, but that would be really cool. It goes all over Wyoming, and I don't know, I enjoy snowmobiling, but I think I would enjoy my dogs pulling me around a little bit more. I think that would be really cool. For sure. Well, we went to the Pedigree Stage Stop this year, mm-hmm. and that yeah. was pretty awesome. Yeah, that it was, was legit. Like, negative 40 degrees <laughs> yeah cold enough that my truck's diesel fuel froze yeah and we couldn't start the truck and i had to get underneath it with a bunch of hot water from the sink you know just like <laughs> splashing the fuel line trying to get the truck to start but dogs don't freeze. dogs don't freeze <laughs> <laughs> dogs would be sure, just fine sure those dogs those dogs seem to do okay be um, great we also we went to the kennels the sled dog kennels up in talkeetna uh-huh, in alaska, in alaska. Mm-hmm. and that was dallas cv who's one that i did around a couple of times it's yep. his kennels and they let us like we didn't go in the winter we were there in the summer but they have summer carts that the dogs can pull you around on yep and the dog that our lead dog on our cart that we got to drive was his lead dog. Oh, man. When he yeah. won the Iditarod. So, I felt like Togo and Balto yeah. were pulling me, you know, <laughs> on my three mile loop. Yeah. That was the coolest thing. That was super cool. So, I, I'm not a huge animal lover. And so, we've had this conversation many times. The biggest obstacle to me having this dream fulfilled is that Ash is allergic to dogs. And. <laughs> Malamutes and huskies are some of the biggest shedders in the world. And so we're going to have to figure this out. Yeah. So, yeah. He thinks he can do it. I don't see how he's going to keep the dog hair out of my out of my nose. Right. <laughs> so, we'll figure it out. It's we a- will. We will. For someone who watches countless Facebook videos of dog sledding, I think yeah. it's bound to happen eventually. We just need to find the right situation. I'm just going to put up a flyer around the neighborhood looking for Malamutes. <laughs> you keep and you feed and I will train. <laughs> and then I'll just have a neighborhood sled dog team <sighs> that I pull around. It's like a kid's gymnastics or something like that. You know, it's like I'm looking for a sled dog team. Yeah, it, it will happen. I think we'll just ha- I'll just have to get shots or right. something. <laughs> All right, my number five, my last major adventure that I want to go on. It's a ner- little bit of a nerdy one, but I would like to walk the trail to Mordor in New Zealand. <laughs> I think that would be pretty awesome. And I think that that tells you a lot about me. And, <laughs> you know. Yes. So that does tell people a lot about you. But I have a question, which mm-hmm. will tell a lot about me. Uh, is that a real trail? Yes, it's a real trail. For reals? Or yes. is it just like the scenery in New Zealand you that can you hike get to hike around? You can hike to some of the places that they filmed. And apparently Rivendell and the Mines of Moria are a little bit further of a hike, but some of the other places are fairly close together. And so you can actually visit a bunch of the places. But you hike to them or I do you just so. drive to them separately? No, I think you hike to them. I think it's like 140 miles or something like that. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I would do that with you because I would love to hike. I will throw my wedding ring into Mount Doom (laughs) (laughs) as you bite my finger off to make me keep it. Yes, you'll have a very upset wife. Yes, that happens. But (laughs) it's quite cool. (laughs) That would be cool. Yeah, I I would hike that with you. I am one of the people who I don't not like Lord of the Rings. I'm just like never in the mood to watch it. Right. But then once I start watching it, it's like I'm s- totally sucked in. Yeah. And you're like, where's the lightsabers? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm like, where's Legolas? Yeah, exactly. That's true. <laughs> That's all you really care about is where's Orlando Bloom? Yeah. Oh, Legolas man, at- or Aragorn. I'll take either. So yes. there mm-hmm. you go. 
Ash, what do your elf eyes see? Legolas. <laughs> Uh, that's that's a great list that yeah. list describes you very well yeah that's the best way to get to know me <laughs> yeah you don't need to know what i've done in my life you just need to know what i want to do with my life and that will tell you about my life that's awesome so, so <laughs> i know this episode's kind of been a little bit silly yeah but we let's be honest we think we're hilarious <laughs> so <laughs> and hopefully you do too <laughs> And uh, hopefully you'll keep listening. And, you know, this was just a, like I said before at the beginning of the podcast, we want you to get to know your tour guides a little bit. And we're your tour guides through a lot of these national parks. Yep. And so we look forward to talking more about the national parks in a fun way, telling stories, telling things that are interesting. And we will do that coming up. So uh, the park that we're going to be doing next is Bryce Canyon. Yeah, yeah. Love so, Bryce Canyon. Yeah, so we'll start with Bryce Canyon. Uh, we wanted to talk about this one. We visit Bryce Canyon usually at least yearly. We've been there twice already this year. Yeah. So, it really helps that it's open during wintertime and it's like magic during Christmas. Yeah. Bryce Canyon is so cool. So we're really excited to talk about our favorite spots in Bryce Canyon and talk about some of the interesting things and, uh, you know, activities that we like to do. And so that's what will be coming up. Yep. That sounds great. I love it. I can't wait for these episodes. Okay. So we will see you next week and we will be here to talk all about exploring Bryce Canyon. Thanks for exploring the national parks with us. Please share, like, and subscribe. And if you need any help planning your own trip, click on over to dirtinmyshoes.com. See you next week. Same time, same place. And don't forget to get some dirt in your shoes.